Okay, so welcome here to the Thomas Francis Mar room in the Bishop's Palace, which is of course dedicated to Thomas Francis Mar, gentleman probably best known for flying the first ever Irish tricolour here in Waterford on March 7th. So uh, we've just passed the anniversary of that particularly auspicious date. So Thomas Francis Marr himself was sort of quite famous during this period, particularly as an orator. So he had a slight background in politics as a result of his father, who was of course one of the first Catholic mayors in a very long time, all the way back in the 1840s. So his father, also called Thomas Marr, had his own sort of background in Newfoundland, where he was a shipping merchant. Now Thomas himself took a real interest in Irish politics from a young age, and he joined the uh, 1782 club, which was based in 33 the Mall here in Waterford City. So the uniform of the uh, 1782 club can be seen right here. And of course, 1782 is a reference to uh, Grattan's parliament, where Ireland received uh, legislative independence for the first time. So quite a popular year in Irish history. And they were really sort of gearing towards getting that back. Now, from a very young age, Thomas sort of made his name as a speaker. And he became known, of course, as Mar of the Sword from a very young age, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, uh, as part of his role in the 1782 club, he of course visited France, which were sort of quite famously revolutionaries throughout history. And while he was there, he was actually given a tricolour, which uh, matched the French tricolour in many ways, uh, but with a lot more symbolism, I suppose. So of course, when he brought it back, he was careful to mention that the uh, white in the centre was to signify peace between the green or the Gaelic Irish and the orange or the orange men of the north. So it's a really sort of powerful flag in that regard. Now after one particularly rowdy meeting, he actually ran in from the street up to the first floor of that, uh, that club, which of course, as I said, was based in 33 the Mall, and uh, he flew it out of the first floor window. Now this was not a small act, this was considered slightly treasonous and he did actually get arrested for his role. But uh, because of his real importance in the community, and particularly his father's importance as mayor, they couldn't really do a lot in terms of punishing him. So he was not so lucky on his second sort of outing in uh, sedition and treason, which is when he of course got involved in the 1848 rebellion. He was one of the organizers of this particular rebellion. He, along with famous characters in Irish history like William Smith O'Brien, planned the whole thing after there was a split in the group known as the Young Irelanders. So Marr joined the section of that group which believed that Ireland as a, an independent nation could only be achieved through violent means. And uh, the speech which he of course gave to uh, attempt to achieve this end was what got him known as Mar of the Sword. Now because of his role in that rebellion he ended up being transported to Australia where he didn't spend a very long time. Uh, he was married there but he eventually grew a little bit tired of the sort of quiet way of life there and he sort of craved a little bit more. So he uh, made his escape and eventually ended up in New York City. Now there, once again, he made a real name for himself and eventually in America he got involved in the American Civil War because he found himself as a close friend of Abraham Lincoln, who was president at that time. Now he eventually became a brigadier general, as you can see in this portrait up on the wall here, where he is uh, wearing his uniform for that. And once again, uh, he really made a name for himself as an excellent speaker. He was really wonderful at motivating his soldiers uh, to go into battle. And of course, these were very difficult, very violent battles. It was a really, really bloody war. So uh, he might not have been the best soldier. He didn't see many battles, unfortunately. A uh, particularly pesky knee injury kept him uh, out of the fight. But you can see that he received a lot of uh, honours for his role in that army. So you can see a number of swords here. You can also see his clarinet right there. So he was uh, quite an avid player of that. But some of these swords are really, really interesting artifacts. And the one in the center here in particular was a gift for his role in the army. Uh, made by Tiffany's in New York and you can see on the hilt of that right there there's an American bald eagle just representing the top there. There's also a number of other artifacts from his time in that army so you can see his sash from his uniform there. The famous sprig of green from the soldiers who went to battle with sprigs of green in their hats to identify them as Irish fighters and also the medals that he received for that. Now his own brigade were known as the Fighting Irish 69th so uh, they're still quite popular today. They're still based in New York and you can still sort of uh, find another a number of them wandering around there. Okay, so there you have it, Thomas Francis Marr, Irish hero, particularly proud son of Waterford, uh, Marr of the Sword, fantastic orator, and of course the founder of the Irish Tricolour, which we still use today. So uh, definitely an interesting character in Waterford's history.